Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big topics in adulthood, like money, health, relationship with yourself or your loved ones, self-identity, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is for it to bring comfort and help you feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. Today, I am sitting here on my couch after spending about two weeks with my family because my sister and my brother-in-law were finally back from China after the long years of pandemic lockdown. And we had our first full family reunion in four years. And we actually also went for a family vacation, which is pretty fun. And I think it's quite interesting because it is also Kevin's first time joining us for a huge family reunion as like a new up and coming family member so that was pretty awesome as well. It's been a while since we spent like this much of family time and although our time together is precious it is also something that is interesting just because that we've been living apart for a while. And as we all grow into the adults that we are, things are also different from how they used to be. And it's just interesting to be observing how each family members have grown and how the interactions are with one another. And of course, all the funny things that happen. That was so much drama in my family. Not like conflict or fights, but like, Funny things like phones dropping into the toilet bowl or our aircon was on fire, literally. And like the fire engine has to come to my house and all those stuff. Like it was crazy, but it was fun, but it was also tiring. But anyways, so I mentioned before in my introductory episode that I place a very huge value in my life, in my family. And one of my life's goal is to really retire my parents so that they can enjoy life. But I am constantly feeling guilty that I am not there yet. Like I haven't been able to provide them with that life and I always feel bad about it. And you know, after spending two weeks with my family and I'm finally back in this house, sitting here in my living room, spending time with myself and reflecting on my time together, I started having that thought again and... I thought it would be great for me to just write it down and to share this with you to kind of make sense of this whole situation. Like, am I disappointing my parents for doing what I want? (sighs) It's a big question, right? So I always think that family is an interesting concept. You are born into a family, which you have no control on who you get or what kind of life you are going to lead. Whether you get loving parents, asshole parents, absent parents, maybe you lost a parent at a very young age or you lose both parents, that can have a very big impact for the rest of your lives. For those of us with parents who are present and cared about us, we grow up based on their values and what they say is right or wrong for us. We seek validation from them. When we do well in school, we get complimented or rewarded. When we do something against their will, we get punished. And as we grow older and become more and more independent in our lives, by right, we can just make our own decisions based on what makes sense to us, based on what we believe is right or wrong. Yet because we value our parents, because we care about them and we respect them, we still choose to listen to them. We value their opinions when it comes to who we are dating, what kind of job we should take, whether or not to get married or have kids, whether I should get a more secure job or start a business. We, we care about what they say about all these things. But what happens when what we want in our lives are different from what they think what we should be doing? Of course, us as Asians, it's quite easy because we are raised to respect our elders and honor them and we should just listen to them. But what if we don't want to? I'm sure a lot of you out there can relate. And what I'm about to share is really my take on this entire situation. I am really self-conscious about sharing my views on social media because I know that 
it might be offensive for someone. People might not agree with it. But I also promised myself that I wanted this space to be an honest space where we can share about our own views. So I'm going to share it anyways. But remember, it's just my opinion. One thing you need to remember is that our parents are also adults who are trying to figure life out. Okay, they might have more wisdom than us because they have lived longer, but they may also make mistakes. They may not be familiar with the industry that we're in or the new technology or the new possibilities that are out there for us. If you are a millennial, your parents would be somewhere between a baby boomer and a Gen X, which means that they are raised by our grandparents who lived through the world wars and and the Great Depression. And what our parents really value is a stable job, a paycheck, a harmonious family life. Just to have your family together, it's great. While us as millennials or the Gen Zs, we've seen what our parents gone through. And we learn from their mistakes and we value more of a work-life balance. We want to pursue the meaning of life. We want to contribute to the greater good. We want freedom. What we want in our lives are just very different from what their generation wants. So instead of thinking that our parents are really out there to get us, they just don't understand us. Yes, they don't understand us. And that is not because they did that on purpose. It is just because we are raised in a different generation where things are different. From their point of view, they are expecting certain things from us because they want the best for us. But the truth is, for us, these are not good stuff because these are not what we believe to be true. Now, one more thing that I wanted to share with you is something that I read from the book, The Courage to be Disliked. So in Adlerian psychology, there is this idea called a separation of task. So meaning like when it comes to a person's action, like whether or not a kid completes his homework, we have to ask ourselves, whose task is this? At the core of it, it is the kid's task to complete his homework because he is the one who is going to be learning as he completes his homework. He is the one who gets the benefit of completing the homework or gets punished if he doesn't complete the homework. But based on society expectation and what we are used to, you might also argue that it is the parent's duty as a parent to make sure that he completes his homework. But if we just go back to the simple question of whose task is this, The task is the kids. Same thing goes to whether or not you choose to get married or have a kid. Your parents might think that they have a say on it, but truly, the task of getting married, it is your task. You are the one who is signing the paper. You are the one who is going to start a family with a new person. You are the one who is going to move in and probably start a family and live the rest of your life with this person. The person who is ultimately going to receive the results from the decision is you. As much as a parent can think that it is their duty to do a certain things, or they claim that it is for your own good, the reality is that they are also doing it for their own good, okay? Parents ask kids to do their homeworks because they don't want to be seen as an negligent parent. Or they want us to get married because they didn't want other people to think that they didn't do a good job in raising us. And that's why no one wants to marry us, <laughs> you know? Like, for real. Apparently, after Kevin proposed to me and when I broke the news in my family group chat, my dad actually turned to my mom to tell her that this is my last duty. Yes, he felt like it is his last duty to marry me off and make sure that I have a partner in my life to take care of myself. And you may think that it's cute, like, aww. But at the same time, in my mind, I was like, how is that his duty when I am the one signing the papers? Like, He literally cannot get married in my place. So it shouldn't be his duty on whether or not I get married. I understand that this may be a traditional way of thinking and this is what he was raised to think was his duty as a father. But if you really think about it, the task of getting married, the person who 
receives the results by the choice of getting married, it's me. It's not really him. So it's it's not really his responsibility. I get where he's coming from, but I'm just trying to make sense out of this. She's not saying that our parents have no say at all in what we choose to do. It's just that their role, their duty is just to help guide us and advise us so that we make the right decisions. So all in all, it really is our own choice, our own decision to do what we want to do in our lives. But then the question is, how do you detach yourself from your family? You need to remember that you are an individual besides being a part of your family. Like, besides the fact that you are a daughter, a sister, a niece, a mom, or whatever, you are also you. You are also an individual living your life. Unlike our career, you cannot choose who your family is. At least not the ones that you are born into, but you can choose to commit to jobs or career that actually makes you happy in your life. And you should fight for it. Even if it means that it might upset your parents or your family while you're getting into it, even if it means that you have to get comfortable, you have to do something that's out of your comfort zone just to fight for it, you should still do it. I would say that the first step of detaching yourself from your family is to create space between you and your parents or between you and your family. If you are still living at home, perhaps it's worth that extra money for rental to just have the right hate space to live life your way instead of your family's way. When you create more space between you and your parents, whether it's by moving away from home or by just spending more time in your bedroom or by moving to a different city or a different country, you are showing your parents that you are an independent adult who is capable with their own decisions and taking care of your own life. That helps them to see you as an adult and trust you in the decisions that you make. The next thing that you can do, and I think you should do, is to communicate about why you want to do things a certain way. You need to help them to understand your way of living. And even if they disagree with it, at least you get your message across instead of just not letting them know at all. I understand that with Asian parents, communication can be very hard sometimes because they have the pride that they hang on to. They have certain things that they are used to believe in and they are stubborn about their views. I totally understand that. And so if verbal conversation, if face-to-face conversation is very hard for you, maybe consider a long text or an email or a letter. At least try to get your message across in the hopes that they will understand. Thirdly, you also need to learn to set boundaries. Now, as Asians talking about setting boundaries, it almost feels like you are betraying your ancestors because we are always told to honor and respect our elders, right? But time has changed. While certain culture and tradition should be honored, I really think that we also should embrace changes and do what needs to be done so that we can continue to grow and to improve as humans. You need to learn to be firm with your nose and make space for them to understand you for the choices that you make. Give them some time to observe how things are for you when you choose to make your own decisions. And if they love you and if they care about you, eventually they are going to accept your decisions and to continue to be happy for you for your choices. For myself... As I look back into the times when I made decisions that are against my parents' desire, for example, when I went to university, my parents wanted me to be a doctor or a pharmacist, but I really hated science, so I didn't choose any of that. I could tell that my dad was disappointed, but I also knew that he knew that it is my choice to do and it's what I wanted to do. Even with my decision right now to pursue more so of an entrepreneurship journey rather than having a very secure job, I know that my parents have their own concerns about it and I totally understand where they are coming from. But looking at the way that they treat me and how they continue to love me, I just know that even though the decision that I make isn't the same as what they expect me to do or what they want me to do, 
that doesn't decrease any of the love that they have for me. If anything, I think them expressing their concerns only shows how much they love me and care about me. So to answer my own question of am I disappointing my parents by doing what I want, I think they are bumped by certain decisions that I make, but that doesn't mean that they love me less. And I think I am happy to come into this conclusion myself. So that's what I have for you today. When I decided to talk about this topic, I actually kind of struggled to structure my words together. And every time I try to make a recording from a podcast, I always have a doubt on whether or not what I'm saying makes sense. But I hope it does. If you are listening to the end, do let me know if there are certain things that you're unsure of or, or you need more clarification. Just let me know. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give it a five-star rating on Spotify or give it a thumbs up on YouTube. And I will see you in my next episode. Bye!